I don't want to take away from his time. His name is Felix Hell, H-E-L-L. -L. That's really true. But he's from Germany. And in German, hell means bright or light. In this case, a very bright light. And so you will see that for yourself. He um, is an extraordinary player and will really show you this organ like nobody's business. Uh, I'm really delighted you're all here. That little boy in the green shirt, can you come up to the front row? Because I'm, I'm afraid, yeah, that the sun's right in his eyes. Uh, right there. There you go. Thank you, love. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce the man of the hour. Let's give a big round of applause for Felix Hell. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Wow, what an amazing crowd we have today. I had no idea that we'd expect so many people, so I'm absolutely thrilled. Uh, what I would like to do to, uh, today is to introduce you to the organ. How many of you have heard the organ? Okay, you've heard a little bit. Okay, all right, okay, quite a bit of people then. Do you know Mozart? You know Mozart? Yes, you've heard of Mozart, most of you? Okay, Mozart was a prodigy composer, and he was very young when he started composing symphonies, and he called the organ the king of instruments. Why do you think he would call the organ the king of instruments? Any ideas? Yes, right there, gentlemen. You're hitting the nail on the head because it's got all these different buttons and they have all these different instruments. Very good, indeed. So what you have here in front of you is a full-size symphony orchestra that can be controlled by one person alone. Now, call out, what instruments are in the orchestra? Anybody? Oboe, okay, what else do we have? Right here. Violin, what else? Piano, okay, all right, what else do we have? Yes? In the orchestra. Organ, uh, kind of, yes. Uh, anybody, yeah? in the green right there. Harp, that's right, absolutely. And we've got all kinds of instruments. We've got trumpets, we've got oboes, we've got violins, we've got, well, yeah, okay, one more. In the yellow. Cello, Cello absolutely, absolutely. Now, all of these things that you find in the symphony orchestra, the organ can imitate. Let me show you a couple. So, we heard trumpets, right? Oh, we've got another one here, even louder. Right? Then we heard some flutes, right? Right? And we've got strings. Right? And then we heard, what else did we hear? We heard maybe clarinet? Right? Or the oboe? So as you can see, we've got this incredible orchestra right here, and it can be controlled by one person alone. Now, you see these buttons here on the side. Each one of them is a different instrument. Each one is a different sound, right? And as you may have already noticed, the sound does not come out of this, what you see right here, which is the console. This is simply your control console. This is kind of like the cockpit in an airplane. This is where all the action happens. But the sound is generated up there behind this screen. And the way the sound is generated is through thousands and thousands of different pipes. That means air goes to the pipes, and they're in different shapes and in different materials, and that's how they create the different sounds. So you can see some of them right here. Here in the very first row, you've got these kind of wing-like pipes, right? 
and then you've got some wooden pipes there to the left, and you've got a few metal pipes over on the right, but this is only a small fraction of how many pipes there are. Like I said, there are thousands of pipes behind this screen. Now, the big question is, who wants to hear what it sounds like when you put them all together? Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> Thank you. Is that not a powerful sound? Isn't that something that something as majestic as a king would produce? It is, it is really breathtaking. And you cannot only hear the organ, maybe some of you could also feel it, because the range of the instrument is so incredible. You have some really tiny pipes that are about the size of a pencil, which sound something like this, very quiet. Okay, they're about this small, really tiny pipes. And then you've got some which are really long, about 32 feet in length, okay? All right, some houses are not 32 feet tall, all right? So, and this is what they sound like. Be quiet, just take a listen. Can you hear that? Okay, and then, and then here we've got another 32 foot, this one. Check this out. Sounds a little bit as though the, the organ has bad gas, but thankfully, if you play it right, it doesn't sound quite as bad. So, now, with all these instruments at our disposal, you will see one big difference to, for example, the piano. We have, as you already saw, four keyboards that we work with. Now, we only have two hands. Why would we need four keyboards? Basically, 
there are certain sounds that are assigned to each keyboard, and what you can do is you can choose one certain sound for one keyboard, another type of sound for another keyboard, and you may have already noticed, we have a fifth keyboard down here which we can play with our feet. So you can sound, assign a third type of sound which we play on the pedal board, as we call it. And to play with your feet, you need a special type of shoe. And uh, mine are quite old, and I'm embarrassed to say they've got some holes in them, but, you know, what can you do? We, we musicians don't earn a lot of money, so... Um, <laughs> So anyway, what I'd like to demonstrate is that uh, is a piece by a composer named Johann Sebastian Bach. And in fact, he was the person who composed the piece you just heard. Now, who enjoyed that piece? May I ask? Raise your hand. Was that a cool sound? OK. Now, can anybody guess how long ago this piece was written? Any guesses? Right here? Uh-huh. I couldn't hear. Or behind in the gray shirt? Right there? How many years ago? 1978, okay. <laughs> All right, well, actually, this piece was written about 300 years ago. Can you believe it? Now, if you think about some of the songs you hear on the radio, you hear them one day, and then six months later, they just kind of disappear, and, and nobody even remembers that it existed. But this music is so great. It stood the test of time for 300 years, and I'm convinced that people 300 years from today will keep listening to this awesome music. Now, another piece that I wanted to play for you displays uh, the various use of the keyboards, and it is also composed by this person, J.S. Bach, about 300 years ago. And it is a movement from a trio sonata. Now, the word trio means three. And it is precisely what this composition is. It utilizes three voices. So what I'm going to do is have one sound in the right hand. Let's take the trumpet, right? And we'll have another sound in the left hand. Let's take the flutes. OK? And then we'll also have a third sound in the pedal. Let's take the cello. OK? Now, I'm going to start playing, and I want you to keep track of each one of those instruments and see if you can follow it.
Thank you. Now, how many were able to follow? How many were able to follow all the different voices that were going on? Were you able to hear it? Yeah, the trumpet and the flute and the cello, all going on at the same time. Excellent. So um, now we've covered all these different instruments, and there is one particular instrument or group of instruments that I want to cover next, and those are among my favorite. Those are the strings. Now. The string sounds on the organ are extremely quiet. Here, let me show you. This is, once more, the trumpet in comparison. Right? And then here, look how quiet the strings are. This is a string right there. Right? And you can go even softer than that. If you're really quiet, you can hear that. Right? Really quiet. Okay, so I'd like to play a piece for you, which is among my favorite. And it is by the American composer Samuel Barber. And some of you may have heard this piece. Now, it is really important that you are extremely quiet during this one because it really shows how subtle the organ can be. You heard it roaring at the very beginning, and now I want to show you the complete opposite side of it. Now, we've got this majestic instrument, and it is just so versatile. And then also, let's try an experiment. First of all, I'd like you to not watch what I'm doing, although it may be interesting to see the hands and the feet moving, but we'll see more of that later today. But what I'd like you to do is close your eyes, OK? And then see what you see after you close your eyes while the music is going on. It is really, really spectacular. Try it. OK, and the second experiment is when the piece is over, do not applaud. OK, don't clap when the piece is over, because the few seconds of silence after the piece is over are absolutely magical. And I'd like to, for you to experience that, OK? All right, here we go. Keep your eyes closed and enjoy the ride. <laughs>
You guys are absolutely fantastic. This was wonderful. Who enjoyed that? Isn't that one of the most relaxing experiences? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm sure you'll find this piece in, throughout your life. It's one of those works that will also be played 300 years from today. Now, I have one more piece for you. And this is by the French composer Charles-Marie Vidor. And the title of it is Toccata. And Toccata comes from the, from the Latin word which means to touch. And the reason it means it is called Toccata is because it needs to be so played so fast that you don't play the keyboards, but everything goes so fast that you just barely touch the keyboards. It's in constant motion. And I think you'll really enjoy that. Um, and once we're done with that piece, then we have a chance for you to ask some questions, if you have any, uh, about the organ or the music or the kind of work that I do. And so think of them. And I look forward to speaking with you. And um, enjoy the Vidor Toccata.
Thank you so very much. You have been a wonderful audience. Now, do you have any questions? If you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand. Yes, gentlemen in the yellow. Yellow and blue, yep. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Which kind of job do I work for? Well, I do what I do right now. <laughs> I play concerts for people and play this amazing music and show it to people who don't know about the organ and its great music. Um, right here, lady at the very end. You've got to speak up just a little bit. I couldn't hear you at all. Can I play the organ with my eyes closed? Well, sometimes I want to close my eyes, but I can't because there's so many things you have to manage, you know. Um, but if I try really hard, I think I could do it. <laughs> okay, gentlemen in the dark blue. That's right. Why do I have to hit the buttons to work the instrument? What happens is, these draw knobs, these stops, or different instruments, as we call them, um, you have to pull them in and out. If none of them are pulled, then you have no sound anywhere. That means you first have to choose which sound you want, and then the organ will start playing. Yes, Lady in Pink. <laughs> Is there really a piano that has pipes on it and that blows bubbles out? Uh, I haven't seen one yet, but there might be. <laughs> yes, gentleman in green. Have I played the organ? Yes, I have. I do it every day. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, in yellow. Yes, it does it play different instruments than what I showed you. If you look at each one of those white draw knobs, each one is a different color. Each one is a different instrument. So you can spend all day trying out all these different sounds and mix your own and combine them. It's kind of like being a painter and having all kinds of different colors. It's a lot of fun. Yeah? Yes. Who made up? Who invented the organ? Well, the organ goes back as several centuries prior to, um, the, prior to AD. So 400 BC was the first organ that was built. So that was about 2,400 years ago. And of course, it has developed over time, like most other instruments. But, um, but this instrument, kind of the way we see it here today, is about, has developed in the last 100 years or so, I would say. Yes, in red. What type of instruments are in the organ besides the ones I showed you? I mean, like I said, there are hundreds of combinations that you could choose, but some of the ones we have not tried so far are something like the harp, right? Or we've got even um, chimes. I mean, they're just endless colors, and you can really mix and match your own. Yes, in green. Could you say that again? How old can a pipe be? How long? Oh, um, the longest pipe I believe that exists is 64 feet tall. Yeah, I mean, they get huge. They kind of look like an elevator that you can step into almost. They're not just really tall, they're also really wide. Um, yes, right there in the red and black, yeah, uh-huh. Say it again. How do I, that's a great question. How do I get to control all the pipes back here from there? Is that your question, right? There is a cable that runs behind the organ. And so it's an electrical connection that goes right into there and up to the pipes, and it controls everything from here. And this is actually movable, so you can put it anywhere here in the front that you like. Couple of more questions, okay. Yes. Does it have all the instruments? Absolutely, it's got many of them. All right, one last question. Right here, lady in white.
What if there is not what? What if there is no layers of pipes? Then we would have no sounds at all, unfortunately. But thankfully, we've got this magnificent instrument right here. And since you are, I'm assuming, all from around the area, I encourage you, come here, take a look at this instrument. And uh, Margaret Lacey has been very happy and is very accommodating. Yes? Which, who? Yes, in blue. Who? I couldn't hear you. Could you repeat? Who taught me how to play the organ? I've had many teachers over the years. Some of them, um, I mean, I, my first teacher when I was seven years old, and then I just kept switching teachers over time and went to better ones. Yeah. Yes, one more. When I first started playing the organ, I was seven years old. Yeah, so I was, I could not even reach the pedals. Could not even reach the pedals. So I had a special bench actually. The bench was about this tall, so I could play with my feet. But then the problem was, I was sitting so low, I could not reach the manuals. I was kind of playing like this. But uh, eventually, and thankfully, I grew. So now it's no longer an issue. All right, I think that's it for question. Now, I want to tell you one more thing before we leave. I had such a great time showing you this instrument and playing this music. I'll never forget this day. So, for a memory, I want to take a selfie with you guys. Is that cool? Should we do that? Okay, all right. So here's, here's, here's what we're going to do. I want everybody to look into the camera, all right? And on the count of three, we all say cheese, okay? Let's practice it once. Let's practice it. One, two, three. Cheese! Excellent. Okay, all right, okay. Let's do one more. Let's do cheese and also everybody, let's raise our hands up into the air, okay? Let's practice that, okay? But on cheese, on cheese, not sooner. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Cheese! Oh, great. I love it. Okay, all right. I think, I think we're ready to perform. We can go on stage. All right, we're not going to be able to get everybody in there, but the majority. Let's, let, that's a great idea. Let's do one into the center, one this way, and one that way. Okay, ready, guys? Okay. One, two, three. Cheese! Okay, all right. Next one, this way. Ready? One, two, three. Cheese! <laughs> and the last one over here. One, two, three. Cheese! Okay. I won't forget you guys, all right? Thank you so much for having been an outstanding audience, and uh, I hope to see you again sometime, all right? <laughs>